to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Karan Bhatia, who's an excellent interior segment uh, surgeon at Mirat. So at the outset, thank you, Sonal, for this opportunity. Uh, I'll dig right into the talk. So my talk is the approach to lens and ocular trauma. Uh, I'm a cornea cataract and refractive surgeon. So lens injury is much more common than one would presume, and the outcome is generally much poorer due to the associated injuries with it. And there are a lot of issues which are controversial or debatable regarding its management. The preoperative assessment becomes extremely critical over here to assess the size of the tear, whether the lens is involved or not. And you know, vitreous prolapse, you need to look for that. Sometimes it's difficult. An uneven AC depth is sometimes the only sign of subluxation that you may find. Uh, B scan is controversial, generally is not done in OGIs, but you can do probably a CT scan also after patching the eye. Uh, whenever you're, there's a disparity between the pre-op and the intraoperative findings and you're not sure whether there's any vitreous prolapse or not, the first step would be to inject triamcinolone inside and then confirm its presence. Uh, a capsular beach anterior, you can usually see it on the slit lamp. Uh, a good dilation is required if the lesion is peripheral and for posterior lesions it gets difficult to uh, visualize it and it can occur in just isolation as well. So. Uh, presence of an IOFB should always be looked out for and be prepared for intraoperative surprises. No treatment is necessary for the breach itself. So let's look at this case. This is a case of a corneal tear and a cataract as well. There's a tear in the anterior lens capsule. So the first step over here in such small tears, I know suturing will be dealt by Gunjan, but uh, you, you can just suture the wound and then you can actually convert this thing, this, thi uh, this ALC tear into a flap and then you can probably do a rexis and then these are generally young eye particularly if it's a young eye it, these are generally soft lenses so IA does the job uh, and then you can easily implant an IOL into the bag or uh, into the sulcus. A three-piece IOL is generally recommended whenever cases are uh, you know uh, the capsule co uh, is slightly compromised or the rexis is compromised. This is a photo and a video that I'll be showing. It's courtesy of Dr. Deepak Magur. So look at if you look at over here, there's an intracameral and a corneal foreign body along with a corneal tear and there's a perforation of the lens itself. So uh, s this is the case. So a lot of planning is extremely important, particularly for the incision side. So you would prefer somewhere around 12 o'clock. Let's look at this case over here. <coughs> Sorry. So what Dr. Deepak uh, has done over here is, the first thing is he's made a sclerocorneal tunnel you can do that or a clear con can also do, but you don't know the size, so sometimes it can be difficult, so you can ex extend the size. Look at the size of this foreign body, it was huge. And once that is done, this tear is sutured, and again in the same sitting, what he has done is he's uh, basically convert, uh, put an IOL, then after the IOL has been put, he can actually convert it into a rexis, and uh, the case did pretty well. Uh, so lens pieces are actually the major cause of inflammation. And they are the ones that cause the rise in the intraocular pressure, along with other causes as well. The all particles, whether whatever is there in the anterior chamber, must be removed because this is what uh, causes it in the inflammation. And an intense anti-inflammatory uh, treatment is required, obviously after the wound is sealed. Uh, not at the f if there's an open globe injury at present, so then you would not start steroids. But once that wound is sealed, then you need to do uh, give steroids. Lens particles plus vitreous plus blood is a potent insider of PVR development. So cataract is the most common lens injury. There could be significant visual disturbance. It could be localized to total. And you know the progression could be from uh, minor to total in a, couple, in a couple of hours to years as well. And uh, as I said, it's soft, aspiration is enough. And intervention should be influenced by the presence or the potential of posterior segment pathologies. So Avanish is there for that. So this is another case, if you look over here, so this case, uh, uh, this was a post tear. This is one of my, I was a fellow, fellow that time. Uh, so clear corneal incision was made. And once this incision was made, you can see over here, try to do a rexis. 
where it's getting slightly difficult, it's, it's not possible, then you need to go in with your scissors or a micro scissors, whatever is available in your OT. A micro scissor is much better, I'm not using one here. And then you try to do whatever you can, try to get a capsule, try to do a little hydro dissection. And what you see when I'm trying to aspirate, you can see that there is something, there's a plaque over here. So this plaque, as you can see in this video, there are a lot of sometimes, particularly pediatric cases, you get these plaques that form. So they have to be peeled or taken care of, otherwise the patient will not get uh, vision. Uh, so once this is done, you can see uh, a nick was made in it and you have to, a good attempt is always to try to peel them off. If they do not come, then you might have to cut with the scissors or in combination use a vitrectomy cutter to deal with it. So it came off nicely, like uh, the movement would be something like a rexus and whatever you have. Yeah, so it's, you can see that. And once that is done, uh, uh, I try to reduce the synechia, but what you see over here in the periphery, you have to be very careful because from this side, this opposed edge, there could be a little bit of bleeding and you see right here and you could actually induce an error dialysis as well. So once it's, it's a little tough, the next thing would be you can just cut it with the scissors and uh, then you can implant the IOL. Small I, uh, if the pupil is small, you can uh, use iris hooks as well in such, uh, such situations and the IOL was put and the patient did pretty well. Lo whatever loose sutures need to be removed. This is another case of a uh, traumatic cataract in a child. Uh, so you can see the ALC is already compromised. We cut with the scissors and once that was done, this was converted into a rexis. Again, you're getting a plaque over here. So this will probably be have to be cut. So there's a compromised ALC, rexis over here. So this was cut. And then these lenses are generally very soft and all you need is IA. And then you can implant an IOL into the uh, sulcus or bag or whatever you have. And see, this was done. I'll just skip this part for now. And you need to do a PPC. This is a four-year-old child. So you need to do a PPC uh, because they're gonna develop a PCO pretty fast. Uh, so PPC was done, and if you look over here, I'll show you the video. Uh, I put it nicely, no problem at all. And surprise POD1, there was, you know, the haptic was slightly out. And so these lenses rotate as well, so I again went in under GA and then rotated. And then what you can do in situations like this is, you might have to do a posterior capture of the IOL where the ha optic goes behind the posterior capsule and uh, then th this is when it's going to be stable in such eyes because the ALC is compromised. Always inject trimcellone. I'll just skip this video for now. So the goal is to prevent iatrogenic damage to the retina and sacrifice the lens if vitrectomy is performed with risk or already developed PVR. Preserving the capsule further increases the risk of anterior PVR and thysis. So there's a question about primary versus secondary cataract extraction. Primary is generally a single surgery and prevention of secondary complications like IOP elevation are prevented with it. There's immediate rehabilitation, post-operative synechia uh, uh, are not developing, so it's, it's, it's uh, the, the, the easy. But, but the thing is the secondary, the I optimal IOL power and the astigmatism management is only possible with the secondary procedure. Uh, so uh, if it's a child or a poor compliant, I would do a primary, or if it's a very small tear at the periphery. Otherwise, secondary is generally recommended and you control the inflammation and then, then do it. Uh, so uh, how to calculate? Sometimes you might have to use biometry from the other eye. A single multi-piece, a single piece of multi-piece will be decided according to the capsule integrity. Uh, Post-operatively control the inflammation, uh, always evaluate the retina, suture management, visual rehabilitation. Sometimes RGPs do really well in corneal tears, uh, particularly uh, so you can do scale lenses or RGPs. And if it's a kid, amblyopia therapy is extremely important. To summarize, a sm uh, uh, small tear with cataract can be taken up for primary surgery, manage the lens fragments, secondary IL is recommended, prevent damage to the retina, and early amblyopia management is critical for children. Thank you so much. Uh, just a quick comment, Karan, uh, about that foreign body which was there in the uh, in the lens. Uh, I mean, uh, having a very thorough ultrasound would yes. actually clinch whether to put an IOL or not. Because if there is a breach in tissue, it's actually better not to put an IOL in that first go. Uh, because with there are very high drawing blocks. Definitely, uh, defi absolutely agree. So that was nicely done where you can actually see the posterior capsule if you look at. So I think uh, getting a good uh, ultrasound. There are reports ultrasound. also. You see, there's a uh, ophthalmia noticeable article that was published by Dr. Sabarsachi Sengupta, where just you uh, there was a lot of caterpillar hairs that were there in the eye of the, of the tarsal conjunctiva, sclera, subconjunctival. 
but there was no perforation something seen but you have these caterpillar hairs as well that was seen in the retina and the vitreous so you all see that that's what i said retina is the most important structure you are saying that as a cornea surgeon but yes you need to see whatever is there in the retina and your management should go according to that thank you so much